Good afternoon, everyone. Southern Africa, atmospheric compression events, feet of hail dumping, black frost so intense, instant freeze of the grapes in the vineyards, flash floods, all-time record floods in Johannesburg and across the entire country of South Africa. A look at the crop conditions, record drought across Southern Africa, some of the driest conditions they've had in 150 years. And then suddenly within a single week, record rainfall. Getting five times the average amount of rainfall for the single month. Area here in question that has been decimated for the planting this year. A glimpse at La Nina conditions anyway. And when we fast forward into the grand solar minimum, the conditions we can expect planet-wide from June to August as we cool, the weather patterns will change. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to my channel, Adapt2030. Look at Southern Africa, all the way from Kenya down to South Africa. The major grain growing areas across the Southern continent, definitely having difficult times with rain, snow, ice, and anomalous weather this year. As we proceed into the grand solar minimum, these are the weather conditions that you can expect from June to August is prevailing compared to what we have today. And when we get into December to February conditions, you'll see that right during the growing season, it's going to even get drier down in Southern Africa. Now, as a precursor to all these events, it's been record driest down there since records began. Some places second driest. Interestingly, though, within a two week period, it flipped from record drought into record rainfall, literally smashing the old records by five to seven times in the depth of the water that came down in some areas. Look here at the map of South Africa for you. The other two countries within that are Lesotho and Swaziland. And what I mean by flip and record rains, atmospheric compression events across the country, starting in Johannesburg, flash flooding. This is in the city so you can get a gauge of what some of the outer lying towns of Gautung, downtown Joburg, what the streets look like in the city, flash flooding across the periphery suburbs, just smashing through neighborhoods. These are tiny little creeks that are overflowing into major rivers now. Traffic stranded. Absolutely a mess. And then this was also in Pretoria. Across the entire country, record flooding. The crop update here, this was October 2016. Failures in a lot of places, poor conditions in others due to lack of rainfall. A look at the drought map here in Southern Africa. This is over the last 35 years. But the major planting areas in South Africa in the beginning were drought and that ground was so hard like concrete it hadn't rained in forever ranking second driest or driest ever recorded in the country and then suddenly as the rain started in early november across the corn belt record floods that water just ran off so any topsoil that might have been hanging in there is washed away fields flooded farm machinery damaged inundation of drainage basins drainage creeks anything that they need for the farming in itself a look at flood list i mean thousands hundreds of thousands affected all the way from cape town up to durban into Joburg, and even zimbabwe got in on some of the action but just the severity and the size of this atmospheric river compression event across the entire country was something astounding the major grain producing areas here on the map with corn and wheat digging into the exact districts that were affected i want you to notice the darker green areas are where the highest output is and let's jump in district by district for the rainfall over this event that occurred you can see 2016 levels so far above anything else and the head start on the season as well. Coastal areas inland. That's Lesotho right there. That darker circle. Swaziland as well. Top right. 
And the precipitation amounts are just off the map, literally. They're off the charts on how much rainfall came down during this time. You can see in this major growing area, they are going to have a very difficult time, if not an impossible time, to get the crops in the ground this year and get everything harvested. Their planting is going to be delayed by, you know, six to eight weeks already. And how deep did that water penetrate really under the soil? It appears that it hit like concrete and just ran off. So six inches or eight inches down in the soil itself, how much moisture is really down there? Is, are the crops going to even grow that well? Looking at regular El Nino patterns, it shows dry for South Africa. And we're flipping right over into the La Nina, which signals wet. But that is such a massive, rapid change. It's just mind-blowing. And as well, when we're looking for signs of the grand solar minimum, South Africa has been just pounded this year with snows in un unusual places around the Cape. Worst frost in 20 years. Herdsmen, they are masters of nature. They're getting caught out on heavy snowfalls. Dozens of them, not just these three. That was one little small contingent, but there were dozens stranded. They were all found safely, but they are masters of their environment and they were trapped. You know it had to be a strange snowstorm. And heavy snows across South Africa and record-breaking snows and snow early in the country and mountain passes closed and bitter cold winter. And it just rolls on and on. And then we get into black frost. I never heard of this before. Regular frost, when it adheres to something, leaves a layer of ice on the outside, which gives it a little bit of blanket protection. Black ice is literally like a mastodon fast instant freeze where it is so dry in the air there's no water molecules that can form ice around it and it absolutely freezes everything total loss 21 years is the last time they had anything like this occur in the cape vineyards area so not only did we see austrian wine crushed this year we saw french wine damaged up around 28 percent of all french production lost 80% of the Austrian production, German production down, Napa's down because of drought, and now we got South Africa getting crushed here on the cold. You can only expect globally after the surplus and stocks of our wine are bought out and used over the next year or so. This new production is not going to keep up with our usage. So, not this year, but next year. Look for a push on wine prices. And the amount of hail coming down in Durban, and this is a tropical area. I've traveled in South Africa this is a tropical warm area along the Indian Ocean and look how much hail has come down. Feet again, this is an, another different atmospheric compression event separate from the rainfalls. This hail event in itself is rare indeed. This was in October. The rains were in November. You can see there is a gargantuan shift in the climate going across the southern hemisphere. This year, Australia Winter lasting all the way until just last week and it instantly flipped into summer. Record cold across Brazil, record cold across Argentina, all the way to now. They're still getting winter temperatures and it's supposed to be going into summer. There are noticeable differences in the southern hemisphere climate this year. And looking out at La Nina, spot returns. Agriculture doesn't do too well during La Nina for a lot of different grains and softs. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Since we're talking about crop losses across the entire continent of Africa, jump over and talk to Bob at Trade Genius. I left the link right here below. He is trading on the grand solar minimum effects of the agriculture. This is what they're following. This is what they wanted to know was the planting season behind in South Africa so they can make a better forecast. Now, in your own opinion, do you think agriculture is going to be affected this year? And do you think it will drive the price of delivery in Africa? If they can't supply themselves, they're going to need to pull it from somewhere else. The global surplus we have on our grains currently is being eaten into. There's no filling up the bucket again. What we use and once it's used globally, we are going to go into a deficit. It only takes a small five or six percentage loss before prices start moving, and we are definitely above that percentage here. He'll be happy to talk to you about the strategy and how they see things going into the future. And if you like this information presented to you, please subscribe to my channel, Adapt2030.